Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to our online service this morning. I, I just want you to know you've been prayed over. Uh, we pray over every video we put out that God will use it to magnify his name, to glorify his son, Jesus Christ. We, we plead that. Uh, we want you to feel comfortable in our worship. So when we're singing, you sing. When we're praying, you pray. And, and you feel free to take notes and do all that stuff as we, we proclaim the truth of the word this morning. Uh, we want you to feel invited. So if, if you see that comment section there, if you're watching on YouTube, you can certainly type questions into that. We have people monitoring that. Uh, just know that we're, we're here for you the best we can be, uh, but we're so thankful that you've tuned in. Uh, we ask that, that God blesses you, that God multiplies his word, and, and that he does incredible things in your life for tuning in to Palmerdale Cross Live today. We love you, and thank you for your faithfulness. Well, good morning. Welcome to Palmerdale Cross on this rainy morning. It's so good to see everybody here Welcome those watching online. I hope you are having a great day today as well. Uh, we're getting ready to sing a song as a congregation called Bless the Lord. And it's, it's such an awesome thing to be able to praise the Lord. So many times we have things going on in our lives that try to distract us from that. But to be able to have the freedom to be able to come to church and worship and praise the Lord. And bless the Lord for all that he's done for us. God has done so much for us. And he loves when we praise him. And so I encourage us as a congregation to sing out and pr truly praise and worship the Lord. Because he has done so much for us. So let's all stand and let's sing, bless the Lord. It's been a long time since we've done this. Let's lift 
Fatima. The Bible declares, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you are so, if you are part of the redeemed, will you give the Lord just a hand clap of praise because he is good. We are ecstatic to be in worship. It's been a crazy week church life-wise. We've been incredibly busy. We finished last Sunday and, and had our first men's gathering of the year. And we challenged some men that we're going to be um, focused on our spiritual vitality. And then we rolled into our week and had a very just busy week. A lot of ministry was getting done. And our women's ministry had a conference yesterday. Hyper successful. A lot of women came in and were challenged about the gospel. It feeds into who we are as a church this year. We said we got one focus this year, and that's to be gospel-focused. That's exactly what we're trying to do as a church, and we've been accomplishing that vision and purpose um, all year long, and we're excited to see how the Lord honors that and how the Lord blesses that as well. Um, as you've gathered in this place, welcome. I hope you're ready to encounter God. This is a fifth Sunday, and so what that means is it is our family Sunday. Uh, we pick five Sundays out of the year. And we say, we're going to treat it like family Sunday. Some of you remember, growing up in church, there was no children's church. There, there was no kids leaving. The kids sat with you. And so we're bringing that back. Um, and it's because we want to help our children understand the priority of worship. Help understand that what we do here, uh, some of our deacons, they struggle with some of our terminology. Uh, they call this big church. What we do in, in big church is really important, and we want our kids to see that and taste that and experience that, and so we invite them in five times a year. This is one of those days, and so parents, if you're not sitting with your child, and that may be helpful if you were, um, that would uh, be in just a moment when I ask you to stand and say hey to somebody, um, that would give you a chance to go get your stuff and get over here. However you need to do that, you know, mom's got that look. Mom give you a look that make you straighten up. Your mom give you a look, and you're like, yes, ma'am. She only said a word. Maybe you need to figure that out with your child as we move forward in our service today. We're excited. We're going to talk about what it means today to, to have a, a gospel sense about you, to be, to be kingdom vision, to have Christ-like vision and Christ-like awareness in our day and, and how God does that in the life and hearts of his children. So I want to pray. When I say amen, I'm going to invite you to stand and, and find somebody that you haven't spoken to in a while. Like maybe you wander over and you speak to Miss Tika Wilson, who just got home from, from a year-long deployment. And so saw her and my heart sank, and I was just so excited when you pray for somebody for a year, and then they walk back in, and God is so good, and it's so good to see her home, and I don't know that anybody's more excited than, than her husband and, and their dog, I don't, they're just, I'm sure, just a big, big reunion, I, that's so sweet, glad you're home. I want to pray, Lord Jesus, for the moments that we share in this room, in this place right now, we pray that your Holy Spirit would fill this room. God, that it wouldn't just be another Sunday, but it would be the Sunday revival broke out. It would be the Sunday that hearts were surrendered back to the king. It would be the Sunday that, that families are restored, that marriages are put back together, that finances are, are turned over to your feet and allowing you to operate in the home. It would be those moments where we recognize that we need more of Jesus in our life than we've ever needed. It, we need to focus on the king and the king eternal. God, help us today to gain what it means to be Christ-like in every phase of our existence. 
God, let us worship with a pure heart and a pure mind, singing songs, not off a screen, but into the throne room of heaven. God, may we unite as the body of Christ to please our King. Be big in this space. We trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand up and tell somebody good morning this morning? Let's continue worshiping the Lord this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord, or blessed be your name, I'm sorry.
Don't know if you're going through a, a struggle, but sometimes waiting on the Lord can be difficult because we're waiting sometimes in our time. But God's time is always perfect. I can't tell you how many times in my life where if I would have gone on my time limit, it would have messed it all up. But because I've waited or I waited on the Lord, He came through at the perfect time. I'm sure you've heard this song if you listen to Christian radio, but it's a new one. Yes, I will.
us all sing. This time, the ladies are going to sing great things.
right, all right. Everybody grab your copy of God's Word. Go to the book of Corinthians, the first one, and we're going to dive in at chapter 2, starting in verse 6. God's going to speak life into a church. Remember, this series is called Realignment. Uh, Sometimes you're riding down the road and and you hit a pothole, and the next thing you know, your car's always pulling to the right or to the left, and and you'll, you'll catch a vibration, and you realize... At every sector of life, there are moments and seasons where we need a mechanic to come into who we are and begin to work. Because let's be honest, sometimes life will put us in a position to where we miss the things of God. It's easy in the face of tragedy and trial to often walk away from the holiness of God. It's easy in the midst of the hustle and bustle of life to miss the voice of God. We often want God to scream at us, shout at us, and, and have a, a bullhorn philosophy, but the Bible says about the word, the voice of God, that it's a still, small voice, that it, it's not going to be overpowering and loud. Rarely has God interrupted humanity to speak. He normally whispers. And so as we say as a church family, we want to uh, allow our hearts to come in, allow the Lord to realign us this year as a church. Uh, We're going to get to where we are today in chapter 2, and Paul is pleading with the church to grow your brain into the likeness of Christ. Let, Let the likeness of Christ or the mind of Jesus be what our heart is fully after. If you are one of our kiddos and you've got your, your, your children bulletin, if that's you, wave it around like you just don't care. Some of you are above the age of children, and those were for the kids, all right? If I see y'all doing the crossword puzzle while I'm preaching adults, we're going to talk after church, okay? All right, so kids, follow along with me. I'm going to help you. When I, when I say your things, they'll pop up on the screen behind me. You can take your pen and your paper, fill them out. And it'll be awesome. Uh, it'll, what'll be really cool is that Mr. Felix Hartley will give you a peppermint if you show him your completed bulletin at the end of our service. That's just for the kids, adults. Don't be walking up to Felix like, give me another one. All right, that's not what we're doing. Um, so we're trying to figure out how do we adapt and how do we adopt the mind of Christ into our existence. Paul's talking to the church in Corinth, and they're a, they're a mess. It's messy in church life. Things aren't going well. Um, they, they started out well, but then they diverged. They begin to say, well, I like it this way. I like it that way. Some of them were talking about how they, would, they just wanted to, to be the people who follow Paul. Some said Apollo. Some said Cephas. And, and there was a couple that go, we just want to be where Jesus is. We just want to follow Jesus. And then you had some going, but wait a minute, isn't the gospel kind of simple? Isn't the gospel kind of easy? Is that what we wanted to do? And and, and the Jews would go, no, 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 the cross was weak. It's not, I don't know, it's not, I don't know, the cross seems kind of kind of elementary, but then you had these third group go, wait a minute, no, the cross isn't weak, it's not elementary, it's, it doesn't lack sophistication, it's the cross and the story of the cross that empowers us as the children of God to be strengthened and to come to salvation. And so we pick up today when he's going to talk about what does it mean to actually push that through to where we're reconciling our minds over to the Lord Jesus. He, he starts, and, and pick up with me in verse 6, Paul says, yet among the mature, we we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of his glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor heart of man imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. The things of God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except through the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also... No one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. 
The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Lord, we pray as we adapt and adopt and put on the mind of Christ that you would radically transform our brains, our thoughts, our personalities, who we are, that you would, as a mechanic works on an engine of a car, that you would layer by layer work on our lives. God, that we wouldn't just come to church, but we would be the church. That we wouldn't just know about Jesus, but we would be your children. God, enlighten us, inspire us, illuminate your word to us. God, in my feeble attempt to preach the gospel, I pray that you would use the words out of my mouth, the words out of my heart, the words out of my personality to instruct, encourage, build up, that the gospel may be heard. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So for us to kind of wrap our minds, because what we're, what we're attempting today is a, is, is a deed that is going to spend a lifetime cultivating and creating. If I tell you I want you to start thinking like Jesus, many of you are going to go, <laughs> wait a minute, uh, what do you mean you want me to think like Jesus? What does that even look like for us to think like Jesus? You want us to like walk around and look at a loaf of bread and be like, double in the name of the Lord. Because like, if we could pull that off, we would hurt Munoz. You tracking with me? Like, hey, you want some more chips? No, I got it. Poof, there it is. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. We're like, salsa for four. Poof, like, that's not what I'm talking about. It would be a cool party trick. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about adapting the mind of Christ. Adapting the mind of Christ that we begin to see things like he sees things and are able to comprehend like he comprehends. And for us to begin there, for us to, to begin there, to have the mind of Christ, we must first understand the heart of the Father because you will not get the mind of Christ unless you understand the heart of the Father. The heart of the Father. The heart of the Father is to bring everybody in this room, every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, into a perfect, harmonious relationship with the King. And the only way he can do that was by sending his son, the perfect spotless lamb of God, to be slain on a cross, to die for the sins of humanity, that redemption could come. And so for us to kind of grapple with this, for us to wrestle with this reality of, of how do we begin to understand the heart of, of God, we've got to go back and recognize this reality that the gospel was always God's plan. In Genesis 3, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, and in that sin, that, like eating the fruit wasn't the sin. Like sometimes so you, children are telling your parents, I don't need to eat fruit. Remember, they ate fruit and bad things happened. That's not what we're talking about. The reason Adam and Eve were in trouble, because they, they, they paused and recognized, if I eat this, I can be like God. The great sin of the world wasn't the apple. It was them choosing to deny the words of the Lord. It was them choosing to say, I know better than what God knows. I know better. I can do better than what God has told me to do. I want to be like God. And they, they partook of, of the fruit. And now the sin of Adam and Eve falls on you and me every day. We recognize that the gospel was always God's plan. Paul's writing to the church and he says, he says, your scholars and your people that were wise, they're doomed by death. They're going to perish. I am more aware today than I was even five years ago about how feeble life can be. Like we can all, like we're breaking down. Once you roll past 30, like some things happen. Like I can pop my hip. Five years ago, I didn't know I had a hip. You tracking with me? Like, I can wake up and kind of, like, do a flex thing, and my hip pops. I'm like, where did, Danny, where did that come from? Why does that do that? And I don't, I don't like, some of you are like, do, do you dance too much? I don't have dancer's hip. I'm Baptist. What are you doing? <laughs> like, we get older, and things happen. Like, some of you this morning woke up and went, ooh, a front's coming through. I feel it. Like, easy, James Spann. It could be arthritis, Right? But as we get older, things start breaking down, and it's not, it's not the same. We, we're, we're constantly aware that we're getting older. 
And as we get older, we recognize that life is incredibly fast. You start telling a story and you say, hey, a hey, couple years ago, and then your wife stops you and goes, hey, sweetie, a couple years ago was 30 years ago. You go, no, it wasn't. 30 years ago it was 1970. And then you go, wait a minute. No, it wasn't. 30 years ago was the 90s. And like, you get really nervous when you hear that. Time is flying past, and all of the world seems a bit chaotic. But Paul's encouraging the, the church, those in your day that you deem wise are cursed by death. They're going to die. Because all humanity will perish. Like, we get that. Like There's two things my granddad used to tell me. Two things you have to do every year. Two things. Not every year. He said two things you will do in your lifetime. Not every year. This is going to set, this, this will be better. Two things. The one, you have to pay taxes. They'll come get you if you don't pay taxes. Now, I'm befuddled by the tax system just like you are. It's amazing that we have to figure out how much we owe, but then if you don't pay the right amount, the government comes and gets you. It's just the whole thing. You have to pay taxes, and then everybody else, is, we're, we're going to die. It's going to happen. Short of Jesus coming back and taking us all home, we're all going to perish at some point. Hopefully you're all 117, and you go to bed and never wake up, and you wake up in glory. That's how we want to go out. But we recognize this, and this is where Paul was leaning into. Life is so short that we should quickly figure out God's plan for our life. It's to receive and accept the gospel of Jesus and walk with him day by day. This is his plan. The Bible says that, that before the foundation of the world was laid, God had already looked upon his son as slain. Hey, in Genesis 3, when they, when they fell before him, Jesus was already coming to the earth. God already knew the wickedness of mankind. He already knew the heart of man. He already knew. And so Paul starts talking about the mystery that's going to be revealed. The mystery that's being revealed. The mystery that's being revealed. What is this mystery that we're talking about? This, the mystery and wisdom is given to us by God. And this, this mystery is that God chose you and me to be saved. The mystery is that God looked upon a perverse generation of people and said, that's my people. Those are my people. But God, they're going to leave you. Yes, they are. God, they're going to have wicked hearts. Yes, they are. God, they're, they're a sinful mess. That's them. Yeah, we're talking about the same people. But God, they're, they're prone to wonder. We're going to write hymns. They're prone to wonder and they're prone to leave you. They have a propensity to walk away. They have the proclivity to walk back to sin. You sure that's your people? Yeah. Those are my people. I'm sending my son, the best I have. I'm sending my son that these people can hear the gospel, the good news. And they don't have to die and be separated from me eternally. They can walk in relationship with me, and I'll be their father, and they will be my children forever. And this is his plan. This is his plan. That you could come into a room like this and declare in song and in voice, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Now, in different churches, that would have erupted right there. I understand some of you were a long day yesterday. You were napping. You missed that whole first part. Wake you up. You're back with me. You're a child of God. Like at some point, like a little, like I'm not telling you, like I don't want you to be like Pentecostal up on me and start humbling and mumbling. But what I'm asking you to do is at least hear the great news that God has beforehand chosen you to be his child. And that should like burr up something, a little, little holy indigestion or something. I'm a child of God. Like when was the last time that you allowed your mind to understand and your ears to comprehend? You were chosen by God to be his child. God knows you knows you not the social media version of you knows the real version of you and still says that one's mine that one's mine the gospel was always god's plan not only not only do we have to get at the heart of the father to understand the mind of christ but to have the mind of christ we must receive the holy spirit 
This is why Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 1.18, he says, he says, the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those of us being saved, it is the power of God. To those who are perishing, to those who haven't received Christ, the gospel sounds foolishness. The gospel sounds crazy. The gospel sounds out there. He says, but to those of us who have received the ghost, to those of us who have received the ghost, the Holy Spirit, he says, for those, it makes perfect sense. A light comes on. The, the story of Jesus is illuminated, and now we have relationship with him, and he understands it. This is why Paul begins to say, it is God who has revealed this to us. It is not by man. It says, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. And he says, who knows a person's thought except the Spirit? And he says, for no one can comprehend the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. And we've received... Not the spirit of the world, Paul writes, but the spirit who is from God. So at salvation, God took your nasty life, your nasty, dirty, sin-stained life, and he exchanged it. That's why Paul would tell the Galatians, for I have been crucified with Christ, and it's no longer I who lives, but it's Christ that lives in me, and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. He says, I I was alive, but I was wicked. God came into my life. He saved me from who I was, and in that saving that God did, he snatched my humanity out of me, and he replaced it with his spirit. So I'm no longer thinking like a man. I now have the wisdom of God inside of me. I'm no longer processing like a carnal man. I now process like a son of God. I'm no longer processing. I'm no longer looking at sin like someone who is known to walk in the shadows. But now I have the vision of God, and I'm walking in the light of God, and I'm never going to be the same. We get the Spirit. Now, listen. I'm going to say something very controversial this morning. I'm going to get an email about this. I guarantee it, Mr. Frank. Some of y'all need to feed your spirit. Some of y'all need to feed your spirit. If your spirit is on life support because you're not feeding your spirit, you need to feed your spirit. If the things of God don't get your heart rate up, if the glory of Jesus don't get you excited, if seeing someone go from death to life don't get you fired up, If seeing someone come alive with Jesus don't get you excited, then you may need to go to a spiritual doctor and get them to run some tests. Because you may have a heart problem. You may have dampened the spirit, dampened the spirit, dampened the spirit till the spirit is flatlined. And you desperately need the goodness and Holy Spirit of God to breathe life back into you. Some of you need to check your spirit. He says, we can't have the mind of Christ until we've received the spirit of God. It's the, it's the spirit of God that tunes our ear to the mind of Christ. Hey, mamas, hear me, hear me for a second. Hear me for a second. Hear me for a second. Mamas, men, y'all take five. Some of you like, take five. We've been taking 20. Um, it's amazing how mama can hear her child's voice over all the noise. Y'all ever, like, it's amazing. It's amazing. We don't have that gift. Men don't have that gift. We can hear a deer. We can hear a deer crunch on a leaf 700 yards away. We can. But like, did, you, did you hear your kid cry? No, I didn't. I know I didn't. Y'all, men, y'all ever woke up and, 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 and woke up to a mad wife? Y'all ever done that? Y'all ever played that trick? And you woke up to a mad wife and she said, Why didn't you get up with the baby? What are you talking? What? I thought he slept through the night. He got up three times. You didn't hear him cry? And now I'm on CPAP. Y'all sleep with a CPAP machine? If you don't, don't go take a sleep test. You'll get a CPAP machine. And so I sleep like I'm a, a fighter jet from the movie Top Gun. And uh, I salute Katie every night before I go to bed. She don't think it's funny. Um, but I'm laying like this.
found, the, I found this. Some churches don't do it like this. Some churches ain't got me as a pastor. Is this important? <laughs> y'all think y'all want to, hey, tech team is having a meeting today right after church. If you think you would like to work with me full time, just let Devin know. <laughs> Devin, this looks awkward on screen. You're the one that's tearing your microphone apart. I'm trying to fix your mess. Am I back on? You know, hear me here? Thank you, Devin. Hey, thank you, Devin. <laughs> Devin's the best. So I, I sleep with CPAPs. I don't ever hear anything. Like, I hear <laughs> all night. That's all I hear. All night. From, from, from 9 a.m. to 4.30. <laughs> so when, when it's mommy through the mo- I don't hear that. I, <laughs> that's all I hear. Women have an ear that they can go, I heard it. I heard it. Now, some women go, it's your turn and slap you. You're like, I'm up. <laughs> but I don't hear it. I don't, have, I don't hear it. Like I saw, we, we saw a mom one time. We were, we were at a party, and, and it was a pool party. And, and there's something about the way mother, are, they're in tune with their children. Um, their, her little son went off the diving board, but he couldn't swim. And he had taken his life jacket off because he was going to be like one of the big kids. And the mother saw, like, like, the kid went in. Nobody saw the kid go in. The pool's got 50 people in it. Nobody saw the kid go in the water. And the kid happened to come up one time and let out a yelp, like a, because he was drowning. The mother from inside the house, fully dressed, hears that noise, looks, sees her son drowning in the deep end, runs, swan dives like she's in the Olympics. Dives, and everybody's like, what is going on? Like, everybody's like, and, and she snatches this kid and then gets it out and he's like, beating on the back of his chest and he coughs up a gallon of water and, and he's okay. But it was, I, I heard him. And I'm going, you're inside the house. How did you hear that? And it was, I heard, the, I, heard, I heard his scream. You don't hear the voice of God without the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God tunes in. Like, like uh, some of my older folks will catch this a lot easier than my younger folks. Like tuning in an old AFM radio. You know, AM, dialing it in. If you go too far, you get that static back. If you go too far the other way, it gets, gets crazy. And you got to dial it in. The Spirit is the, the tuning fork of the voice of God. And the Spirit begins to tune our hearts after the King. And we get to hear Him. But also, He says, not only are you going to have it that tunes in your, your ears to the voice of God, but we have the best teacher in the Holy Spirit. Oh, teacher Holy Spirit's a phenomenal teacher. You ever been walking down the street and the Spirit of God said, hey, give that guy five dollars. That's how I know it's from the Lord. Because I'm stingy. And I'm cheap. And I don't like giving my money away. I'm going to just be real with you. Like, I, I don't. Like, I'm not benevolent. Like, that's not my gift. But when, like, something comes over me and it's like, give this money away, that's from God. That ain't from Jeff. That's from the Lord. And there's been moments, I wish I could tell you, I wish I could stand up here and tell you, and every time that happens, I'm faithful. But sometimes I look people up and down and I judge them, that's what I do. I judge them, I ain't giving them my money. They gonna go buy one of them brown paper sacks. But we know what they going to go do if I give them money. And the Spirit's like, I didn't tell you, I didn't tell you to judge them, I didn't tell you to judge them, I told you to feed them. Don't, don't you dare tell them what to do with the money that I'm telling you to give over. I'll handle them. So then my responsibility is not what they do with my money. My responsibility is do I give my money away. The Spirit becomes the teacher. The Spirit begins to show us the things of God, the voice of God, the reasoning of God. The, the Spirit works in us. Paul is telling them, you don't need the literature of life to figure out God. You don't need ten steps to a better you. You don't need that extra podcast. You need to trust in the Holy Spirit. You need to stop doing every worldly thing out there to find God. And start listening to the Holy Spirit. We have the best teacher in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God has access to all aspects of our humanity. You ever thought that the Spirit has control over you in all ways? Like sometimes we think the Spirit's just when our favorite song comes on. Yeah, when our favorite Elevation song comes on or our, our favorite Gaither song comes on, that's when the Spirit shows up. 
No, the Spirit's already been there. The Spirit was there when you were driving 106 miles an hour on the way to church because you were late. The Spirit was there. The Spirit was there when you got $8 back in change and should have got 7 and you went, ooh, got a tip. The Spirit was there. The Spirit was there when you were filling out your tax form. Come on. The Spirit was there every, every time you were telling the story at work that the fish was this big, but it was a guppy. He was there. The Spirit's there. You don't ever outrun. He sees every aspect of your life, and he's on all the time. All the time. The Spirit of God's working in you all the time, and you're deepest and darkest of lows the spirit of god is present and on your highest of highs that moment when you feel the exhale of of holy god the spirit is there and number three i'm wrapping up right here i'm wrapping up right here guys to have the mind of christ we must begin to judge all things like jesus so we to have the mind of Christ, we've got to understand the heart of God and we've got to receive the Holy Spirit. But then we've got to stop and we've got to actually say, for me to achieve the heart of Jesus, I've got to first begin to mimic and love the life of Jesus. I remember I got a guitar when I was in junior high. And all I really wanted to play, this is going to date me a little bit, but all I really wanted to play was Garth Brooks. That's it. That's all I ever wanted. Friends in low places, to be exact. That's what I wanted. And so I would get my guitar. I didn't know how to tune it. I didn't know what strings were. And I would just begin to play. And I would sing Friends in Low Places, no matter how the guitar actually sounded. It was not good, by the way. It was not good. It was so not good that my parents bought me another guitar that was electric. And you're like, why did they do that? They didn't buy me an amp. I mean, amp. So it was just bling, 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 bling. The no amp. And it was a lot quieter in the house. And I was so excited. I just wanted to play. And I wanted to be like him. So I bought the two color blue and black shirt. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's the 90s, all right? 30 years ago. You tracking with me? 30 years ago. And I'm Garth Brooks. I'm him. I get the black, the black cowboy hat. And that's what. You, you wonder why I got a mic that looks like this? Have you ever questioned that? Huh? You think that was an accident? I ain't wearing no lapel when I can stand up here and be like the Garth. You done bumped your head. And so I got me a headset and I just sang all of them. I knew all of them. It was scary. I, 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 would, I had the VHS. You know what I'm talking about? Like old school. Some of these kids are like, what's a VHS? Don't worry about it. And I'd put it in the, the Garth Brooks Live where at the end of the show they took those guitars and they, they slammed them and wood exploded always wanted to do that so bad so bad but I knew I wasn't getting another guitar that's what I wanted I would emulate him what he did on stage I would do staring back at a screen in my bedroom I was Garth Jr. I couldn't sing I couldn't play couldn't read music didn't own a tuner, but I was him. I was so much wanted to be like Garth. So much I named my dog Garth. I did. <laughs> For us to get the mind of Jesus, we've got to be so in love with him that we begin to emulate and act like him. So in. We're so in. We're so committed that we begin to do things like Jesus would have done them. We begin to think about things like Jesus would have thought of them. And I want to help you because this is going to free you today. This is going to free you today. You don't achieve Christ's likeness by heightening your moral standard of life. Uh, so many people, I'm going to be like Jesus and I'm just going to be better. I'm just going to be better. That lasts for two seconds. The first time somebody calls and asks you if you want to get some debt relief on some student loans that you don't have, you lose your mind again. The first time you pull past the state trooper and he flips on those lights, you're like, not again! It's temporary. 
because when we're trying by human and cunning ways to achieve a relationship with Jesus, we're going to fail. You've woken up before and said, I'm going to be better today, but then you're not. You woke up and I'm going to be holier today, but then you don't because you're going about it the wrong way. You don't achieve Christ's likeness by thinking you're going to be like Jesus. You achieve Christ's likeness by coming to the cross and saying, Lord, I just want to be here with you. I just want to be in your presence. Lord, will you speak over me? Lord, will you work on my heart? Lord, will you work on my mind? And as we begin to give the Holy Spirit and we begin to give Jesus the authority to speak over us, as our spirit in our lives begin to hear the voice of the Lord, we will begin to articulate like Jesus articulated. I want you to write these three questions down in your bulletin, in your guide. I want you to ponder these this week. The first is this. How do I daily walk in the power of God? It's not a question I can answer for you. It's only a question I can answer for me. How do I daily walk in the power of God? Number B, how do I daily consecrate, C-O-N-S-E-C-R-A-T-E, I know my people. How do I daily consecrate my mind to the Lord? How do I daily consecrate my mind to the Lord? And number three, how do I, how do I begin to judge all things to the scriptures? I stole this thought from A.W. Tozer, but I think it's fitting for us today. We will never, never, never adapt to the likeness of Christ if we aren't seeking Him daily. We'll never adapt to the likeness of Christ if we're not seeking Him daily. I want to help you. I want to help you if this is the only biblical intake you get in any given week you're not going to obtain the likeness of Christ in who you are you can't come before the throne room of God for 45 minutes on a Sunday morning and walk and talk like Jesus for the next six days it will not happen it will not happen But when you develop a love for Jesus so much, so like, like David would write, that as a deer pants for water, so my soul longs for you. When you wake up every morning and say, Lord, I'm yours in your mind. Lord, I, I, I don't know what my day's going to hold. I don't know what my life's going to look like in 12 hours. But I know I'm going to stand in your power and I'm going to stand on your promises. And I'm going to be your child both today and tomorrow. As long as you let me live, I'm yours. I'm giving you my heart, I'm giving you my life, I'm giving you my love today and tomorrow and, and as long as you let me live. I'm going to wake up every morning and declare over my body, declare over my mind, declare over my spirit, Lord, you're in charge. You're in charge. We won't be like Jesus if we don't daily seek him. I'm going to pray our, our musicians are going to come up. I want to pray, and I, I want you to begin to question in your life, what are areas that you need to tune up in order to walk in Christ-likeness, in order to adapt the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ, the spirit of Christ, in order to actually start looking like Jesus? Will you pray with me? Lord in heaven, we, we bend and, and pause in this season, this moment right here, right now, to be intentional by encouraging our people to ask hard internal questions of their spirit. How can we know 
that we're adapting to the Christ likeness. What does it look like for us to give our heart, mind, soul over to you? Lord, how do we walk in this world and not be stained by the world, but instead encourage others? How do we pick up the the mental capacity of Jesus? How do we process like Jesus would process? How do we judge like Jesus would judge? How do we live in this world and live like Jesus? Father, we pray that your spirit would work in God. We pray that your spirit would challenge us, would move us into the fertile ground of your word, to the fertile ground of your worship, to the fertile ground of your worth. So we pray that you would pass us not. We pray that you would encounter us today, that we would grow in our faith. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. If today you need to join our church, this is your time to come down. We'll help you fill out some paperwork and that'll start a process. If today's the day you say, Jeff, I don't, I don't have the mind of Christ because I've never given my life to Jesus. We have encouragers that would love to talk to you about Jesus. Like that would, It would be their greatest joy to talk to you about Jesus. Maybe today is the day you come to an altar and you just say, Lord, I'm going to sit at your feet and I'm going to ask you to begin to mold me and make me. Whatever the, whatever the Lord gives you, we want you to respond as you stand and sing with us this morning.
You may have a seat. We got some ushers that are going to come. Hey, hey, children, this is a weird part in our service that we do where we're going to we're gonna use these plates and these men that are going to come down and they're going to pass a plate to you. And when that plate comes to you, what we want you to do with it is just take it and hand it to your mama, hand it to your daddy. And if they don't put nothing in it, just keep holding it in front of them until something happens. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding about that part. But we do this. This is part of our worship. Do you know the Bible tells us that when we give, this is kingdom giving, when we give through the, the storehouse, through the church, when we give through the church, God takes this money, somehow multiplies it. The math doesn't make sense. And he multiplies it. And because we give here in Pinson at Palmerdale Cross, there are missionaries around the globe who will, get, who will get money from the Southern Baptist Convention because every church around us is doing the same thing. And then all that money goes together, missionaries are getting it around the world. Do you know that there are ministries in Birmingham, Alabama that will be funded and supported? There is a, an orphanage in Haiti that will, will get a check from us and they'll be able to put food on the table in front, of, in front of the orphans in Haiti because your mommy and your daddy and because you put money in these plates. That makes this seem really really important and so that's why we do this each and every week let's pray Lord thanks for the chance to give thank you that we can never be so generous to outgive you God you're our great giver you're our great king we want to honor you with everything including our money it's in Jesus name we plead amen <laughs> Thank you, Miss Julia. Thank you, Mr. Joey. Appreciate y'all walking that out. Hey, today, um, in this room, immediately after everybody else gets out, the tech media team is having a meeting. They're going to do an ounce of training, help you. Like, if you think, hey, I, I would like to serve, um, and I, I think I could run a camera, or if Pastor Jeff breaks his, his microphone mid-sermon, I can put it back together. That's not hard. Um, if you think you could do that, or if you think I can hit space bar, on the computer and bring up the next slide. I can do that. Um, you hang around for that team. It'll, it'll, it'll happen immediately after here. There's a rumor that lunch is provided. Um, also, one of the things we wanted to do this year, it, it's our biggest challenge, and this is the biggest thing we've done in my seven years here. We are instituting a, a brand new, to, you're hearing about it today for the first time, 
a brand new emphasis that we're calling uh, Serve One Sunday. Uh, Serve One Sunday is our answer to the biggest problem that we're facing right now, and it is that we have a very growing uh, church ministry here, and every family we add and every new child that comes has to be loved on and taken care of while we're here. So much so that we're, we're now running about 40 to 45 volunteers on any given Sunday, and that'll be during a life group or um, inside of a, uh, this hour. And so it's not just children's ministry, there's security, there's greeters, there's all kinds of different elements that we are in desperate need of people. So this is what we've done. We've been praying over this for the last couple of, uh, of months coming into the new year. We said we wanted to start an initiative where we're asking every church member at Palmerdale Cross, no matter if you're 13 or 113, we're asking you to pick one Sunday a month to serve. One Sunday a month to serve. That means there may be a Sunday that you don't sit in here, but don't worry, we, we record everything we do. You can go home and you can watch it. So we, we put a graphic together, serve one Sunday. We're asking everybody to pick one Sunday. Starting next week, you'll have an opportunity to see the list. And what we're going to do is every Sunday we'll have a color. We're going we're gonna to offer you a shirt for you to purchase. Um, and in that shirt, you'll be colored. Every, every week we'll have a different color. And so some weeks it'll be blue week to serve. And when you come to church, I'm giving you permission to wear a t-shirt to church on Sunday because that's your serve one Sunday. And so you'll serve um, for six months. You'll serve one Sunday a month. And then we'll let you redraft and, and pick, figure out, hey, I didn't like working in the nursery. I may want to work with big kids. Or, hey, I was working in the nursery and a diaper hit me across the forehead. I think I want to go hang out with the greeters. And we'll be swapping around and, and letting people move around. But it, it's our way of saying, hey, we're seeing our church is growing and we're in constant need of work and laborers, and there's so many people that we're gathering. We're, we're, we're touching almost 200 people a month that come into our building. Some of you don't always come in the same weeks. That would be fun. Um, but the Lord has blessed us with so many people, and what we want is for you to have a place for you to be able to, to serve and serve out and let your church know I'm here for you. Let these kids know you're loved and valued. Let, let the people, when they walk in, be greeted and empowered to feel like they're part of the family. And so we're going to start, you're going to start seeing a lot about that. You're going to see this logo everywhere. Um, there'll be a video go out this week explaining this in detail, what we're asking. So don't come up to me today and be like, sign me up. I'm not going to sign you up. All right? No, if you come up to me like, Pastor, just sign me up. I'll sign you up 52 times. Don't, don't put that on me. Um, but you can pray and you can sign up. And what we're asking, one Sunday a month. That's it. One. So 12 Sundays a year. We're going to do it for six months, reevaluate, let people change if they want to change, and then we're going to go another six months and see how this goes. Our hope is that you get so in love with serving that when we come to you, like, hey, you're six months up, you're like, just leave me alone, we're good. And so pray about that, seek the Lord's face in that. It's going to be a sweet time together. Has it been fun, kids, being in the house of the Lord? Three, yeah, the kids are like, he's done, he's done. In the name of Jesus, he's going to hush. Um, we're so thankful our kids hung in with us today. Um, so grateful for you parents bringing your kids to family worship. We love this, and we hope you do too. As you go today, go with God. Be empowered by the Holy Spirit to make much of Jesus. Don't forget, if you're signing up for your bunker, our bunko thing that's next Sunday, who do we buy tickets from? All right, back here. It's Miss Susan. Either side of the worship center. Yeah, no, nobody was, don't worry, nobody was listening to me. Uh, these two ladies right here can sell you Bunko tickets. That's next Sunday. It's a, a Valentine's man-woman event. There'll be child care. So, man, if you're looking for a way to, to, to show your woman how much you love her, invite her to come to the house of the Lord and play Bunko. All right? So that's going to happen next Sunday. You can get a ticket for that. Go with God. You are loved. You are valued. We will see you Wednesday night, Lord willing.